Now, it's you and Brad who like gaming. We do, yeah. Bob, you not, not so me. much. No. So how does that go down in the household? It's just a fight for the TV. Right. OK. And you lose by the sound of it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't worry, Bob. We've got a solution which will mean the TV will soon be all yours. Dedicated gaming monitors. So, Max, Brad, you'll be able to play all that you want to on these, whilst, Bob, you will have free reign of your television. Hallelujah. Exactly. Get that controller back. <laughs> <laughs> Gaming monitors are designed specifically for use with video games. Featuring both high resolutions and refresh rate, they provide the best graphics for your console or computer. We've lined up three gaming monitors at three different price points, but for this test, we're keeping the specs under wraps and covering up the logos. So you won't be influenced by the brand or whether it's expensive or just not. Yeah. This is just down to performance and performance alone. And to find out which is best, we've set each monitor to its out-of-the-box settings. Max is taking the hot seat to play her favourite game, Tomb Raider, on the PS5. It's your favourite. <laughs> what to make you feel at home? <laughs> they don't know it, but our first monitor is our mid-price model, the HP Omen 27i, costing £379.99. As the name suggests, it has a 27-inch display, is height-adjustable and comes with QHD resolution, which sits in between Full HD and 4K. What are your first impressions? A uh, nice picture. Really impressed with how that just went up. I thought I'd have to unclip something to unlock it. Looks good so far. So I like the colours. They do seem very natural. I think sometimes when they try and make it vivid, they sort of brighten it up a lot, but this seems actually quite how it should be. The HP can produce over a billion different colours and boasts a rapid one millisecond response time. And what about the flow of movement? That's fine, yeah. yeah. No blurring, no juddering. No, no blurring. No, it looks smooth, it looks responsive. And when it comes to watching from the sidelines, even acute viewing angles are impressive. It's all, all good all round, the viewing. Yeah. Yep, you can see everything quite clearly. So, an impressive performance all round from the mid-priced HP. Next, it's the turn of our budget model from ViewSonic, which costs £178. This Full HD monitor has an impressive 165Hz refresh rate, but things aren't as positive when it comes to colour. It's very faded. Not as vibrant as the other one. No. It really isn't. It's sort of got a sepia look to it, doesn't it? It has, yeah. It's in no way in league with the previous one. Would it make you feel any more love for this screen if I told you this one has built-in speakers? No. No, <laughs> OK. It's not looking very hopeful for the ViewSonic. Maybe the Bob viewing angle test will improve its fortunes. It's just the same... whatever Check angle you look at. Good view it's consistently angle. bad, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a no, then. Let's move on. Last up in our gaming monitor test is the LG Ultra Gear, which costs a shade under 600 quid, but for that, you get 4K resolution and a variable refresh rate, which LG says enhances visuals. And that's not all. This one goes up and down. Oh, we've got tilt. And if you so wish, it does go in no. full portrait mode if you wanted to. It rotates through 90 degrees. Oh. And it looks quite premium as well. OK. Yeah. Like, there's a little bit of a glint at the top, and I think it's just a little bit of... A little bit of shiny shine. Yeah, <laughs> nothing but yeah, a so magpie. So right. <laughs> <laughs> so a strong start from our most expensive monitor. And when it comes to performance, it not only boasts the brightest screen on test, but also handles dark scenes confidently. When it's dark on here, it doesn't look like it's, like, a bad quality. It looks like it's just replicating my sort of the shadows of the jungle a bit more. Mm. And the positivity continues when it comes to clarity. It's clear, it's crisp. I think it's a lot sharper. Laura, and every detail of her, you can see. But I'm just not sure if the first one had maybe a little edge on the smoothness of the guy. OK. Well, that's thrown a cat amongst the pigeons. There's only one thing to do, deploy the bob. You lose your definition as you just go around. Oh, I've got to have a bit of that now, look. Oh, yeah. And with that, our gaming monitor test is done. But which is our family's favourite? Well, I think we can rule out number two. Yeah. Which means it's a toss-up between monitor number one, the mid-priced HP... ..and monitor number three, the premium LG. 
OK, do reveal which screen you're going to go for. We are going to go for number one. Okay. Number one. OK, well, so it was our mid-priced monitor. Oh, was it? It was the HP Omen. Yeah. And it cost £379.99. Oh, OK. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. Interestingly enough, though, it's not 4K. Mm, I wouldn't have known. OK, so the most expensive one on test today was the LG Ultra Gear, this one here. That would have cost you £599. But, of course, the, the viewing angle, what well, was a deal-breaker, wasn't it, really? No, definitely. Yeah. It would have been a problem if you was doing two-player game. Yeah. So, by going for the first screen instead of the third screen, you've saved over £200. Yeah. So there's quite a big price discrepancy between the two. Would you have been led by the brand names had you known those up front? I, I would have, because I know LG are known for their colours and I've had good experience in the past, so yeah, I would have gone LG any day. And it just goes to show that you don't always have to be led on brand. Mm -hmm.